All right now, Mr. Nick, let's go look for clues. We have to, for Mystic Maya's sake. She'll not pass. So, but don't devalue my name and turn it into a gouse, you spiky head pettifogger. With you, I've been made to look like the bad guy again. Although I did get a piece of gum from Edgy Boy, just as he promised. But what I really want is something more valuable. I want Edgy Pooh's heart. I want it all for me. It's all your fault. You've been awake, wild beast inside of this elbow. Urgh. I actually got all that. Ah, <gasps> uh, Miss Elbow, keep your hands off me. This helmet is airtight. No air gets in, and no air gets out. Um, then why do you keep putting it on? Huh? <laughs> Don't think you can get me to move a silly question. You're gonna have to defeat me if you want to get by. I'm not hearing this. I assume we have to get this. Maybe if I show her this letter I got from Edra. Um, Miss Oldbag, if you would look at- What? You want me to look at a worthless piece of- Edgy poo? <laughs> uh, is that a perfume for Moon to Mortis? Uh. Oh, let's see here. Would you please allow this unsophisticated young person to conduct his investigation? Yours truly, Miles Edgeworth. It, yours truly. <laughs> I mean, it's good at flattery. Fine. Only because Edgypoo said so. You understand? I'll well, just thought of something I have to do. Remember, no messing around. You do anything bad and I won't let you off the hook. Looks like she has strong feelings for Mr. Edgeworth. That may be, but you know nothing's going to come of it. That's so mean, Mr. Nick. Feelings are meant to be told and shared. Pearl, no. Ow! Every time we talk about love, I always end up with a handprint on my face somehow. Um, so anyways, let's continue our investigation. Okay. What now? One little thing before I forget. You can't go into Engard's room today. But why? The police's main investigation team is going to be in there all day. You hear? I wonder why their team in charge of investigating the killer. Yeah, so don't go in there. Set one foot in there. You'll face the wrath of Wendy all back. I kind of just came here to see if we could get to... Here we go. Let's go and potentially get kidnapped. Because the killer also had like a pet door. Which is weirdly sus for like an assassin. Hmm. Sure is dark. I'll go turn on a light. Wow. So this is what a star's house looks like. It must be nice to be rich. Why does it look like a sitcom set? <gasps> the Wait, hold on. No, the cat door was on- was it on the left side or the right side? Come on, Mr. Nick, let's find Shu, the kitty cat. Shu! So I guess this is Sh So I guess this is Shu. Ah, what a lovely cat. Hello, Shu! I'm so glad they don't make me meow. <laughs> the cat seemed to like pearls. Pardon me. This is even- God, this is so sus. May I help you with something, mister? Oh, uh, we're lawyers, actually. I'm Mr. Engard's lawyer. The masters? Then you, you must be Mr. Wright. Uh, yes. It's a pleasure to meet your wonderful self. I am the family butler, John Doe. <laughs> Oh, uh, nice to meet you. How do you not recognize that we... Phoenix Wright, you have one brain cell. And it is focused on Miles Edgeworth. Uh, you must know all sorts of things about Mr. Engard, right? Honestly, sir, I don't believe my master is capable of such a foul deed as murder. And, uh, anything else? Uh, no, not especially. 
It's not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the master or his affairs. Hmm. How typically butler-like, as it were. Uh, Mr. Doe, how long have you served at this residence? Well, sir, I would like to say maybe about one year. And, um, anything else? No, nope, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of himself and his affairs. You know, I would have thought Mr. Engar the kind of to have a maid over a butler. Uh, that's a very cute cat you've got there. It's my duty to take care of him. The master rather fancies shoe. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lonely servant to speak of the family cat. Well then, I guess I don't need this piece of scrap paper anymore. Well, I'm afraid I must take my leave of you now. Oh, we should probably get going ourselves. Ah, uh -huh. so young and yet already so accomplished, a master of law. There's also a lot to be proud of in being a butler in charge of a house and all. Uh, thank you for the compliment, sir. People are not always who they appear to be. Now, if you'll excuse me. There's a small door at the bottom of this bigger door, Mr. Nick. I bet it's for Mr. Engard's cat to use. Oh, you mean shoe? The door, it's locked tight. Well, I guess that's to keep nosy people like me from entering it. Ah, uh, these there are masks here. Yeah, the one in the middle is the steel samurai. The one next to that are the pink princess and the evil magistrate. They fought many battles against the dra backdrop of neo old Tokyo. Wow, you really know a lot about the Steel Samurai, Mr. Nick. I don't know whether to laugh or cry that I know more about that show than a kid. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. A giant bicycle is flying through the air! That bicycle pearls is one where you don't have to pedal and it moves on its own. Really? Wow! But sorry to disappoint you, it can't fly. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, there's a giant cooking hearth here. That's actually a fireplace. How are they different, Mr. Nick? You know, I've never actually seen a hearth before, come to think of it. You should come and visit Faye Manor then. I'll show you one when you do. We've already seen an incinerator. It's a very comfortable and spacious lounge set. I wonder if famous stars drop by and sit around and have a good time. In any case, I don't really belong here, do I? Uh, what is with me and feeling inferior today? That's me every day, Phoenix. Huh? Okay. There's another door over there. You shouldn't go wandering off over there, Mr. Nick. I yes, Pearls. Now I know how Maya feels when I tell her to stop playing around. Okay, I don't think there's anything else for us to look at. So let's go back to the hotel. Uh, it looks like we're the only ones here. And yet, the hotel seems so busy somehow. How do you because the police team is scouring for clues about the killer? I don't think there's anything for us to examine. Hi, Santa boy! I gotta say it like this. Hi, shitty bo sh shitty boy! City <laughs> boy! Yeah. Sorry. It is one of my favorite lines in Haikyuu. It's just when he goes, shitty boy! And then it kind of, like, you know how, like, it, it almost sounds like shitty boy? Sorry. I cannot combine that again with a country accent, but uh, I love that line. Uh, Lotta, you're still here. A wrecking course! An investigative photographer eats her stars on her ability to snap up the scoop, yeah? And this hotel just has that aura of mystery. You know, like, something's always about to happen. But, do you have a camera? Rick Given! Photographers gotta have cameras out the ear that corn to be a real pro, you know. So, I'm hanging around here. Speaking of cameras and being in the mail, 
You have mine? You bread thief? Why can't you drop that thief thing already? Do we have her camera? Is that her camera? Okay, oh, so we don't have her camera right now. I want to ask you about the night of the murder. What? You're really going to shout out the bus for the info I got? Lotta, you were loitering in this hallway the night of the murder, were you not? Well, kind of, but... Brace yourself, Phoenix. Here it comes. I didn't exactly hang around here the entire time, you know. Followed a few stars around. Got a few autographs, shook a few hands, had a soda pop with a few of them, too. Looks like she wasn't here for the entire time that night. The security lady also wasn't in this hallway the whole time, either. I guess this means there's no one who can tell us who came and went that night. So, about the note that was inside your camera case. Oh, that ditty I wrote? Yeah, can I believe what you've written? You mean the stuff about Angar shoving his manager lady on the Corita? Yeah. Uh, well, I reckon you best not be, be believing that. What? Look, I sort of wrote that on a whim, you know, writing whatever came to mind. Whatever came to mind? Yeah! When you get down to it, it's just a whole lot of random bull doo We're gonna keep that. Uh, hey, what's with y'all? Why are you staring at me like my grandpa used to? Hmm? Hey, why you look like you suddenly got older, too? Or am I just shrinking here? Um... Ah, my baby. My $1,600 baby. What's with that red coat of prosecutor anyhow? The guy told me it was evidence and refused to give it back to me. Well, that's kind of how it is. Hey, hey. You hear that red coat's friend, ain't you? So, put a few good words for me and get me back from camera. You want me to do what? Listen, nag the guy real good for about five hours, I guarantee you he'll give it back. Why don't you do your own dirty work? Well, I reckon it's time for me to get going. Tabloid's photographer without a camera is just a tabloid, huh? Um, yeah, I guess so. Keep yourself together out there, you hear? I'm coming to see you in court tomorrow. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll see you then. And you too there, little one. Keep up the good work, okay? Okay. Don't be picky about your food now. Okay. And make sure you do all your homework, you hear? Okay. And if you happen to find yourself a camera, make sure you bring it right back. Would you please just leave already? Ah, uh, the good old 20-minute goodbye. Let's go to Corita. Again, the fact that there was a teddy bear in, like, the locked-off area of Angard slash... Who am I thinking? The killer. And all of these bears. It makes no... S uh, uh, Mr. Nick? What is that otherworldly ghastly moaning? Uh... I hate evil ghosts! Ah. I don't think it's a ghost. Maybe it's a demon. Excuse me, you're calling a demon brat. Uh. Zoinks, it's the alien! Are you calling an alien? Oh, it's just you, Miss Oldbag. What's wrong with you youngins today? I came down here to pay my respects to my poor one, and you're disturbing me. Please talk to me tonight about the murder just one more time. I talked about it plenty at the trial. I was fooled, tricked, deceived by that fraud of photographer in her note. She was loitering around with that imbecilic look on her face. With that imbecilic look on her face. Okay, got it. Now, now hold on a second there, you little pipsqueak. If you're going to take notes, please make me sound better than that. Oh, alright. Now I've seen everything. Yeah, but you know, I was working that night too, doing my job, minding my own business. 
Oh, it's not like I had time to waste standing around here that whole night. I was wondering if you could tell me more about Mr. Karita. He was the most popular star, you know, especially where it count in my book. And I heard that he was lagging behind to the polls against Mr. Engard. Huh? Well, that's just a recent thing. Bad luck and all that, you know. But he was going to become an even bigger star than he's used he used to be. Look, just look at this mountain of presents. It's a show of the mountain of feelings all his fans had for him. But why the bears? Yeah, the mountain is pretty big and certainly nothing to shake a stick at. Uh, Mr. Nick? Hmm? W what is it, Pearls? The presents, they're all bears, right? She's got a point. There isn't a single thing here that isn't a bear. Please. All of Mr. Kurita's presents from his fans seem to be bears. Oh, that's because you can't think of one without thinking about bears. Bears? Why bears? You don't know? When my dear Wong was trying to keep up bear hand with a bear. He refused to give in and let the bear win. But after the fight, they became friends. Wow, what a more heartwarming story. Look, it's just in those young people's dramas. I can't figure out. I can't see why those two tuckered out. Down by a river going, hey, you, you sure can't fight. You too, bub. You too. Did all that really happen? It's in his biography, bub. What a load of crock. So, ever since then, fans have been giving him bears as presents. Yeah, nice. Bears. I'm Uncle Bear, and I say it's barely 8 o'clock. Uh -oh, what is that infernal racket? It's one of the presents going off. It sounds like it's already 8 p.m., way past your bedtime. <laughs> that startled me. thought I was going to die for a second. 8 p.m.? That's the time when the award ceremony ended that night, remember? Time sure flies. Hard to say it's been... Hard to believe it's been two days since the ceremony. The transceiver. Hello? Hello. This is not a phone. Maya, how is Maya? You haven't hurt her, have you? It seems you were not able to fill your end of the bargain, Mr. Attorney. I have heard the news. So it would seem my present did you no good. No! Missing Maya! Missing Maya! One, one more day, please. All I ask is for one more day. I, I'll get a not guilty verdict for sure this time, please. I suppose if I must. I need that acquittal more than anything else after all. But please, please let Maya say something. I want to hear she's alright. Alright, then. A little. What is with the static all of a sudden? Hello? Hello? Seems. Bath. Connect. Damn it, did the transceiver just suddenly break? Excuse me. I don't know. All of a sudden, it became nothing but static. <laughs> missing Maya! Missing Maya! Why did the transceiver suddenly break like that? They probably have something to, like, keep all of, like, the... transitions going in and out. Like, they probably have, like, a breaker or something. I don't, I don't know what they're called. I should probably have an electronics expert look at it. The sooner the better. Here, let's see what we can find. Wow, 
Wow, everyone looks really busy with something or another. Hmm. They're probably strengthening the evidence for tomorrow's trial. Hurry up with that. Pass that evidence list around. You gotta be kidding me. There's over a hundred people on here. Uh, Mr. Nick? Is Mr. Engard really that big and bad of a criminal? Actually, Pearls, never mind. It sounds like they're working on a different case. Okay, he's not here. Hey, welcome back, Bear. I thought I'd make you a little something for dinner. Uh, that's nice. Thanks. A rich man's luxury is full course meal. At a gant, that is. I'm sorry you went through all the trouble to cook, but I don't have the time to eat. Oops, looks like you don't have a can open a bell. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, this is great. This is just great. You've got to be kidding. And here I thought he had already whipped something up. Oh, I know. There's one way I know how to be helpful. Ask me about anything you want, Bell. Go ahead. Well, since he's here and offering, I wonder what I should try to ask him about. Let's shot in the dark this. And a transceiver. Oh, Mr. Nick, you should ask Mr. Scrappy Detective about that thing. What thing? Oh, yeah, the thing just up and broke all of a sudden. It, it broke, Bell? When I was talking to the kidnapper, it just suddenly broke into static. Uh, looks like it sounded like this. I don't hear any static, Bill. Uh huh? Maybe it fixed itself? That's strange. It was. I'm sure it was making a loud static noise. Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe what? Maybe it was electromagnetic interference, pal. Electromagnetic interference. Um, so what is electromagnetic interference? Please let a gumshoe become. God. My brain is just like. Gumshoe and common are related. <laughs> and something happens when a radio wave gets mixed up with another signal, pal. Oh, when you put it that way. I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, for example, when a cell phone goes off near. goes off next to a computer screen. And the stuff on the screen gets kind of fuzzy, starts acting funny, right? I don't think that's how it works, but. I didn't have, like, a cell phone, like, back in the day when it was, like, even the bricks. So I wouldn't really know. But, like, also, like, the police have, like, jamming stuff. So, like, if you're dealing with, like, a hostage negotiation or anything like that where it's, like, things are, like, very vital and you don't want information going out or coming in, like, you can kind of just jam the frequencies up. I think they used to do these in, like, court. Like, when there was, a, like, a big thing. So, like, the information was immediately going out. And it give kind of, like, the police and the courts and stuff like that a little bit of time to wiggle. And I'm sure it probably happens, like, you know, if they have, like, a crowd of, like, you know, potential suspects. Like, you know, a big murder happened in, like, a hotel. You don't want people to, like, call out or call in and stuff like that. For, like, you know, potentially, like, suspect giving out information to other people that are in cohorts and stuff like that. Huh? I could be completely wrong on all of that. Computer? 
um, it, it, it's like when you use the dryer next to the TV, the screen starts looking weird. Oh, yes, the TV does do that. Huh? Oh, so that's what you're talking about. She seems amazingly happy about being able to understand this. And so the room you were in when the interference to the transceiver happened. And it's gotta be something there that's sending out very strong radio waves, yeah. And something like, mmm, like a listening device or something. Ugh. Hey, speaking of that, where were you when it happened? We were in Mr. Karita's room, the scene of the murder. What? That's it. I gotta sneak into the precinct get a bug sweeper. I'll meet you at the crime scene later, alright? Fail. Uh, wait, Gumshoe. Oh yeah, baby, I'm investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. <laughs> we should get going too, Mr. Nick. Alright, let's go. I assume we're meeting him here. God. I wish there was such a faster way to move around. Hey, you're finally here, pal. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting. Do you have the, um, bug sweeper? Uh, well, y y y you see, I, I got busted trying to sneak in, pal. And suddenly, I'm staring at the precinct doors. On the outside, I mean. So, yeah, I can get one of the police bug sweepers. What do you mean you couldn't get one? We need that item. Hey, hey, calm down, pal. I didn't say I didn't get one, just not the police's. Wow, so this is a bug sweeper? It looks a little broken. And this is what I made when I was in elementary school, pal. Oh, my who? Me, of course. Eh, seeing this sure brings back memories. I love the idea of him being like, very, I, I love the idea of like baby gumshoe just being like, I'm gonna be a copper. And making shit like this. I love the idea of it. Hey, don't go, don't look down on pal. Sure, it looks a little beat up. I put my heart and soul in the building of this puppy here. Your heart and soul? It'll work, trust me, pal. It'll do the job, but... But? Eh, yeah, but you can't set the sensitivity. And so it's gonna beep at anything that gives off electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves. But isn't it better that way? <laughs> uh, well, anyway, then since I brought it all the way, might as well give it a whirl, right, pal? I'm getting that sinking feeling again. Okay, now I'll tell you how to use this baby. As a listen to device or some other sort of bug in, hidden in this room, pal. So we're gonna find it, right? Right. Now, first let's turn the sweeper on. Next, move the sweeper around to give the room a real looksy, pal. And the sweeper will let you know how strong of a signal is keeping up. So keep an eye on it, okay? And once you find something that's giving off a lot of radio waves, press, I'm guessing A, then lock onto it. There's a lot of things here that are going to give off radio waves. So let's take a good look at anything and everything that seems suspicious, okay, Bill? All right, I'm going to stand outside keep an eye out. I mean, yell if you found a bug. Got it, Bill? Cell phone, no, no bugs. A cell phone? What? Don't tell, don't tell me you don't, don't know what a cell phone is. Uh, I'm sorry, I've never seen one before. Now that she mentions it, uh, my cell phone couldn't get any reception while I was staying in Korean Village, and Pearls has never lived outside of that village, so well, I guess I can't say it's impossible to live without one. Uh, the phone is a common place for a listening device, I'd say, but let's take the receiver apart first before we get our, ahead of ourselves here. Wow, you know a lot about electronics, don't you, Mr. Nick? Yeah, I know tons, especially when it comes to taking them apart. It's my specialty. I'll leave the fixing part up to Gumshoe. So, is there a listening device in there? No. I really thought it had to be in the phone, too. What a lovely bear! 
Uh, it's supposed to be one of those fancy bear shaped toy robots. It's a robot! It's a real robot! Yeah, it's a real one. Mr. Nick! It, yes? How many horsepowers is it? How many horsies? Horsies? Um, uh, well, it's a bear, so, um. Um. I really think the listening device is in the TV. Looks like the TV was left on. You're showing old samurai movie. Yeah, this channel plays all sorts of international movies as well as domestic ones. You know, every time I watch one of these old movies, I always think, wow, these Japanese stars are really good at English. <laughs> God. Old school dubbing was a thing. Um, yeah. When I grow up, I want to study Japanese. I'm sorry. This, this, is, this is kind of hilarious when you think about the fact that it was like, this was definitely taken from Japan, then localized into America, and America, and then it's like, I want to go to learn Japanese. When Korean Village is definitely just like a very, um, like, rural Japanese, like, secluded area. I should probably keep my mouth shut here and not destroy her dream. She can learn Japanese. It doesn't seem to be getting any radio waves. Let's keep it. Uh, the radio's on. I'm playing something. Oh, it's Kids Question Corner. Uh, yes, why is it, Mr. Nick? Why don't you listen to the radio program a little more, Pearls? God, there's so many electronics. I wonder if it's that stupid bear. Well, it certainly looks like an alarm clock. What's wrong? Why do you look troubled? I just can't imagine the listening advice being inside the alarm clock. It's just, uh, sort of remind me of something that happened a long time ago. Oh. Well, anyway, it looks like the listening device isn't in there. Wow, there's a lot of loaves of- There's a really delicious loaf of bread- <laughs> Why is this giving me this jelly donut vibes? Girly pop, that- Oh my gosh, I kinda love that. Uh, looks like it's been on Keep Warms all the time since the murder. <laughs> I've had to have been a rice cooker and then they were like, Nah, Americans don't know what rice is, so we're gonna make it bread. Well, Mr. Graffy always says, gotta keep the trail and the scrum seem warm. I think it's the keep warm in that case is a little more metaphorical. Plain old calculator. Maybe he was calculating his allowance? A whole 50 cents. Uh, maybe if it was a spirit medium. What's this? It's a small video camera. No listening device in this gizmo. Everyone's trying to make everything smaller and smaller lately, aren't they, Mr. Nick? And that's what it seems like. But I want to grow bigger and bigger. Well, eating only vegetables isn't going to help you there. You have to eat meat, too. So I'm listening to device a notebook computer. Um, what's a notebook computer? Do you know what a notebook is? Yes, it's a small book with paper so that you can write on, so? Well, the thing is like a notebook in the same way. It's basically a small laptop. Um, Mr. Nick, that's a laptop. Oh, the water in this water pot has run out. I'll get him more water for it. Uh, okay, sounds good. Looks like she's forgotten all about looking for the listening device. What? Uh, this pot can do that? Um, is there a pot that orange juice comes out of? I don't think there's anything like that, Pearl. Sorry. Okay. I'm assuming something's in a bear. And we have dryer. Oh! If you use it next to the TV, it'll make the screen look weird, right? It, yeah. And when that happens, it's called electromagnetic interference, right? <laughs> Good memory, Pearl. I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. I will forget it in like 20 minutes. TV remote, doesn't look like the listening device isn't there. 
Um, so I was thinking, I wonder if a TV remote works on other things, like, could I make you change your expression like TV channels? Zap! Hey. Hmm, but if it could, oh, I bet people would give the... Oh, ooh, the people I would give the old mute button to. Well, I don't think it's going to work on me. Why don't we try it on Maya tomorrow, okay? Okay. Are we pulling a light Yagami? Where the hell is this thing? Uh, there are a lot of lamps in the room. And they're all on. You shouldn't do that, Mr. Nick. Don't you know that's wasteful? Oh, uh, yeah. I'll be more conscientious from now on. Sorry. Okay, let's check all the lamps. Huh. Well, the listening device isn't in the air condition. Ah, yeah. This air filter is covered in dust and dirt. Yeah. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's wash it. I wonder if being a neat freak ever makes... Makes even the tiniest... Dust bunnies look colossal. What? Oh, n nothing. Okay. Check that. Check that. Check that. Check the cell phone. There's nothing else over here. Check that. What have we not checked yet? Uh, this is a refrigerator, right? I really don't think the listen devices and stuff like this. Because it's filled with nothing but healthy vegetable juices, right? Uh, yeah, sure. What does that have to do with listening devices? Okay. I feel like we've checked everything. So we've checked that. We checked Josie Rushi. There's nothing in the light Yagami style. Hold on. Okay, so I've been listening to this for a while. I went for the body. Not the face. It's fine. Th this is this is just the giant stuffed teddy bear, right? It's the biggest one I've ever seen. Hey, so did you guys find it yet? The, the, listen to the device, I mean, bear. No, not yet, but this bear's eye is. Ah, uh, let's see, let's see. A uh, perfectly normal stuffed daddy bear with some really strong radio waves. Uh, it sounds like you found the device to me, bear. Let's dig this big fella's eyes out and see what we got. <laughs> no, you, you can't. S such a violent act. That's... Yeah, it's a miniature camera, and it looks like there's more. There's a transmitter and a dimer. A uh, what a what a meter? A transmitter, pal. Oh, is this more of that high-tech stuff? So this tiny thing is a camera. Yep, it's a thin old CCD camera, pal. It's a small high-grade video camera, mostly used in security systems. So it's a video camera. Yeah, it runs on a battery, which comes with it in a set. But there's no videotape in this camera. And this is only camera by ear, yeah. And the tape recorder with the tape inside it somewhere else. Somewhere else? Uh, the footage changed into radio waves and then sent to that recorder. So, it's sort of like a TV broadcast, isn't it? Hey, you know, you're right. Okay, from 8 p.m. 
Oh, so what is a transmitter? And it's a device that sends the footage the gamma took to a specific location. And it's like a video version of a listening device, Bill. It looks like it's attached to a small clock-like thing. Oh, that's a timer, pal. And you can set it to turn the camera on to record at a certain time with it. You can set it for a certain time? Yep, let's see. Uh, this looks like it'll start at 8 p.m. and go for an hour. 8 p.m.? That was the time the award ceremony ended. There's no date set, but it's... Okay. Hopefully the audio is a little bit better. I... I am not too familiar with encoding and stuff like that, but I just, like, look and I was like, huh, I wonder why, like, the audio is so iffy. And I was like, oh, there's something... <sighs> I'm not good with graphics. Uh, Mr. Detective, how long has this bear been here? I'm pretty sure it's been here since the night of the murder. Then, then maybe... Maybe the scammer got the murder on tape. What? And if you think about the angle the bear is at, it's bound to have a clear shot of the whole crime scene, Bill. But do we have it? So there was a camera in this bear's eye. And it was disguised as a present. I'm sure it was here on the night of the murder, Bill. And it's pretty big, so it stands out pretty well in my mind. But who gave Mr. Corita this present? Uh, I don't know, Bill. But... It means that someone out there has got a video of what happened that night. Isn't there any way we can find out who that person is? It's impossible, Bill. And radio waves can be sent almost anywhere, so there's no real way to find out. Oh. Is there really no way to find out? I got it! What? Hey, Bill. Let me borrow this mini camera for a bit. What are you going to do? I'm gonna go around to the electronics store shop to see if I can find out who bought this. But but that's impossible. I mean, it's already 9 p.m. And leave it to me. Even if I have to search all night, I'll find your man, pal. Oh yeah, baby, it's investigating time. But please don't let Gumshoe die. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah. He he's gone. Yeah. A Mr. Scuffy detective sure is a nice man. He's pushing himself so hard, all from He's pushing himself so hard, all for Mr. Maya's sake. It's a mystery how you always manage to find do things in the most inefficient ways, right? You'll have to excuse me. I heard your conversation just now. Edgeworth, what are you doing here? A rescue team has been created and deployed. I can't say I'm optimistic, but we have to move forward one step at a time. I see. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. We still have to find her. Hmm. So there was a spy camera hidden inside the stuffed animal, huh? You're one lucky man, right? Hmm. Do you know the stuffed bear, little girl? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> of course not. The maker of this bear is a very expensive luxury brand from overseas completely handmade and only a small number of those are exported here. What? The camera and the transmitter that Scatterbrain Detective took with him are dead ends. Things like those could be bought anywhere. However, this bear is different. By tracking how it got into this country, this bear could tell us who the buyer is. C can you really do that, Mr. Nick? Can you really? 
Well, I guess so. <laughs> it's 9 p.m. I think I can still make it in time. I'll be taking this for now. I'm sure you have other things to do. I, I love the idea of just Edgeworth picking up that whole ass bear and just like walking off with it. See you soon, right? Boo, it's still there! Wait, what? Why are you doing this? I have no interest in explaining myself to who, someone who cannot comprehend. Besides that, right? To court ravines tomorrow. You should concern yourself with a little this question. Who was the person that murdered Juan Corita? The real killer. Do you really still think it was Adrian Andrews? To be honest, I don't know anymore. You still have a little time left. Find the truth right. Everything begins with the truth. Juan Corita's real killer, Miss Andrews' past. The kidnapper whose sole condition is an acquittal for Mr. Engard. In this card, Shelly the killer. Maya, the only way I can save you now is to find all the answers to this case tonight. I don't understand what your real intentions are, Edgeworth. But as you said, all I can do for now is find the truth. That's gonna be it for this episode! I, I still think that this has to tie in with, like, uh, Morgan Fay, and my thing is, I feel like if like the fact that like Maya can turn into these dead people, being a like getting Adrian on their side to set up Engard, like that's the only thing. Like there has to have been someone who told Adrian to go there. Like I don't see how she would like. Going off of the whole dependency aspect. Like, that's kind of what I'm going off of that. Like, it had to have kind of been... Something led her to that. Like, to set up Angar. What, like, she either has to know what Karita was going to say and do, or, like, in terms of the confession, or something else. And my thing is, like, it makes sense for Engard to have sent out the assassin and then the assassin kidnaps Maya to make sure that we provide an innocent plea. But the thing is, I'm like, Engard has enough money and popularity. Could he not just like pay off someone? Like we had that happen before with, um... Oh gosh, who uh who was the rich dude in the first game? I can't remember his name. But like he was like supposedly like paying off all these like rich politicians and all of these like high lawmakers like all these uh, cops and things like that. So I'm like, why couldn't Engard in theory do the same thing and instead of going that route? So I'm wondering if Engard maybe had done something like in his past or had to do something and it's the management team that's covering it up. But then why would Adrian then have the idea to, like, make things right? Like, she doesn't care about Engard. She doesn't care about Corita. She wants to get to the truth about Celeste. So I'm wondering if... Eng there might have been something between Engard and Impacts. Or something in the suicide note said something about Impacts. I mean, something about Engard. But then why would Karita sit on it all this time and not do something sooner? I don't know. Hopefully we'll get some answers, but that will be next time. I'll see y'all then for maybe more investigating. 
Or maybe we jump straight into the trial. I don't know. But I'll see y'all then. Bye.